Iconwork.com throws you directly in the deep end. You know by their domain and the content that is produced on their website that this person is dedicated to creating icons. In this video, we're gonna go over Iconwork.com and three more sites to show you exactly how a great portfolio site should be designed and built. Let's get into it. So this is Iconwork.com. We see by their domain, by the content that they produce, that this is basically an icon mill, right? This designer or this team, I'm not even sure if it's a team, I'm pretty sure it's just a designer, but these people are solely dedicated dedicated to creating icons. We see that they've done work for Skyscanner, for Oslo, for Braun, for Klarna, just all these massive companies. And we see that this is basically the go-to person for icons in the industry, right? And what we can see from this work is that it's split into a few simple sections. So the first section that we're gonna see here is gonna be the hero. Now this hero, I'm gonna zoom out here so we can see the full picture, but this hero is a pretty simple introduction of the work that they do, the color schemes, the, the type of style that they're used to. And as we scroll past, we see, okay, I've worked worked with some massive companies. Here's my customer satisfaction, my customer stories. I've worked with Siemens, with Google, with Braun, all these massive, massive companies. And then, then we go into my projects, you know, but first we have a summary of the people I've worked with, some projects, so you get an idea. And then we go into the actual introduction to the projects. And as we click into these individual projects, we get a nice summary of the work that they created. So here we have a gallery of these icons. And as we pass this introduction of icons, we also get this explainer of how the icons were actually built using the these individual radiuses, making sure that it all works together with the family of icons with Skyscanner. We also see it in context here. So what we can take away from this specific portfolio as a freelancer is the following. So we have an introduction to your work, right? We can see that as the hero up here, we have an introduction to the overall work that this person is doing. Then we get some logos. Now this can either be customer stories. It can be just plain logo clouds like this. That's totally fine. And then we have the actual projects and within the projects, what do we have? So we have an introduction of what this person did. We see here, we see the introduction of what this person did, their role. So I built it together with my colleague. We have all the people that worked on it together. We have a massive gallery of work, the work itself, obviously, and some presentation sheets. And as we scroll all the way down, we get a very simple next project. And this just keeps the user on the site looking at more and more incredible work that this person has done. But that doesn't compare to the next site that we're gonna talk about. So AaronPoe.com, let me go ahead and reload the site so you guys can see the animation here, but AaronPoeAndCompany.com, I wouldn't necessarily call them a freelancer, but this is a freelance team, it's all, it's all similar, you know? But this is a very minimal website. And what this person does, if it's not clear already, is brand identity systems. So this is what I love about the site, it's super Super simple as you go on it you have the name of the company the name of the person and then brand identity systems so you know that whatever I'm gonna look at right now all these different projects it's gonna be about brand identity so let's go ahead and check out one of these projects here so Square Sans Display so I know that this person's currently a creative director at Square but what we can see from their portfolio is the work that they're trying to showcase. We have a small animation here, but as you scroll down here, we get all the examples of the different type of typography that is available for this typeface that this person designed, all the little details that we wanna see. So he's just showing off the project at this point, right? And that's completely okay. When we create great work like this, it's important to show it off. It's important to, to be able to say, look at this amazing work that I've done. You should be looking at my work, you know, I'm proud of it. And so that is a great time to be able to showcase those little details, but it's when you get deep into the project itself that you want to be able to showcase those details, not necessarily way back in the beginning. So if you go on to the next project here, we'll see that we have a motion principles project for the same brand identity system. So for Squared, and we can see all the different types of animations that were created, all the different types of motion that were created, different frames, sequences. So we're trying to elaborate all of the project, the entirety of the work that was done for this project. Now I'm going to go back to the homepage here and go ahead and click on copper.com because you guys need to see this. So when we click on copper.com, we get a a simple introduction to the project. And this is, as we can see, it's very similar to all the other ones that he's doing. But as we keep scrolling down, we get all the individual designs that he's done, but we also get mockups that show the design in real place or in real time, if you want to call it that. And this is important because not only is it super important to be able to showcase your work in this type of format where we see, okay, this is the icon, this is the button, this is what it's going to look like. But when you showcase it in C2, so a mockup that is actually on a billboard or on a postcard or whatever it is, the client gets an an idea of what their work would look like if they hired you. So this is a super important step that is critical to add when you are creating these portfolio pieces, maybe not necessarily on a project itself. I mean, it's important when you're sending it to a client maybe, but in a portfolio piece like this, I think it's super, super critical. Now, these last two websites have been quite minimal, quite simple, but as we go on to the next one here, if I reload this, we'll see that 
we have a much more animated site. So we have welcomeelliotbesson.com. Probably miss misnaming that, but elliotbesson.com likes to play around with a lot of animations. Now, this is similar to a lot of Webflow work that we can see online. All these, these sort of locomotive interactions and animations that we see here where the design sticks to the bottom of the page. That is quite similar to a lot of Webflow animations. So this is a great way to showcase that you are great at Webflow, at web design, at animations. So all these interactions, it's important to showcase the work that you want to get hired for, right? So just me saying that, that this is similar to Webflow, it's not a surprise to me seeing that this says Webflow development. Now you may be thinking, well, you saw this website before and that's true, but in any case, it's important to showcase the work that you like to get hired for, right? So if this person knows that this is the type of animation that they like to do and they're good at it and they get paid for it and all that, then that's what your website should be, you know? If you are great at UI and design systems like this, we can go ahead and open that and you see that animation, that interaction interaction. This is super common in Webflow and it's not difficult to learn, but it does add a lot of value to your site. Now, as we scroll here, we see that the phone slightly moves up. That is a super nice little touch. It's not critical. It's not important to the site, but as we just add that, I feel like it's a better website. I don't know why. It's just an interaction that it makes it feel like it's at a higher level than other ones I've seen. But anyways, as you scroll down, we get an important piece, which is the introduction. You know what this person did on the project. This is all a similar, similar story. But as we scroll down, we get more of their work and we can continue with animations as we keep scrolling. So this is super important to realize, right? When we're building a project like this, all of these screens are static, but if we can incorporate bits of interactability or animation into it, why not? You know, it's just, it's going to improve the experience of the users in most scenarios. Sometimes these animations can get a little bit out of hand, I will admit, but in most scenarios, having an animation as part of the website, as part of the experience, it can be a great experience. Now, I don't know if you just saw that, that was a little bit of a flicker there. We'll leave that as a, as a pass, but this is a great way as well to go into the next work. So instead of just having a simple button, we get a nice animation here. We can go ahead and click and it's the entire page and it takes you to the next work. So that's fantastic. Now, the next website that we're going to cover is going to be completely different to the last three that we just talked about. So this one isn't even a portfolio site. I mean, it is it is a portfolio site in the sense that we're showcasing work, but it's not finalized work. And this is what I wanted to showcase. So this is a website where the designer is showcasing everyday sketches. So this is simply him sitting down, drawing something every day and uploading to his site. So this is almost like an Instagram, like a dribble, something like that, but on his site. But as we click on it, we get a very simple lighthouse effect of his design. And if we click on the black here, we'll see that we get it inversed. So that's super, super cool. And as we exit out, there isn't much else to the site other than the fact that this is super scrappy, super simple to build, but you can see that the consistency and the value of the work is what's important here. So showing up every day, doing all these everyday sketches, what you can learn from this site is that even though it's not a final sketch or it's not a final project, this person still decided to create something like this to showcase the consistency, the value of, of creating something every day. And you can take that for your own project. You can upload work in progress. You can upload designs that aren't necessarily at the best, but you can say, look, this is what I've gotten to. This is what I'm learning. This is what we're going to try to improve as it continues. And that's completely fine. And what we see in this project as well is that he does have some more finalized sketches like these helmets here. But overall here, these are all rough sketches that anybody could be doing. And just uploading them every single day is the valuable part here. So if you guys enjoyed this kind of video, then do let me know down below. Any questions, any comments is always down below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one.